guys and welcome to another journey to perfection this time it's a little bit of a small round you may want to call it the skeleton crew but that's not a problem for us we can still bullshit around <laughs> So, um, this time we have Jonty on the show as guest. Hey, Jonty. Hey, how's it going? Could you please introduce yourself real quick for guys out there who don't know who you are? Of course. Yeah, my name's uh, Jonty Sparrow. I'm a British Planko player on YouTube. Uh, my channel is Geekism, uh, so you can find me at all those places. Geekism on YouTube, on uh, Twitter, I'm at Jonty Sparrow. That's J-O-N-T-I. I can only assume that my mother lost a bet naming me that. But uh, yeah, that's it. We play regular stuff. I, I'm kind of doing a lot of realistic stuff at the moment. Uh, there's a big resurgence in that kind of stuff in Planet Coaster with like Bro Coaster and Jubilee Gardens. So my, my sort of foray into that is called Pinewood Hills, which is a sort of uh, British family park. And uh, I do other stuff as well, but that's the main thing on the channel. And then there is another dude. Hey, Blind. That's what I'm relegated to is the other dude. Hi, my name is Greg. Uh, the internet calls me Blind because I don't see very well in real life. I I play a lot of management games on twitch.tv slash blind IRL and uh, I've been playing Planet Coaster since literally 15 minutes after the alpha went live. Oh, nice. Old school. Yeah. I totally mean, I was, I was really late to the party. I, I missed alpha completely. I, I got into that, uh, the you know, that one little beta weekend mm -hmm. they did, mm -hmm. uh, Party in the Park. That was my first time playing the game. Oh, really? That that was uh, like way late. Oh, really? That late? Yeah, it was like a week before launch, I think. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, it was like 1k hours into the game already by then. Yeah. Yeah, I was like 600 hours in at that point. Yeah, I was super late. I was, um, I was watching, uh, somebody sent me a Parkitect video of Sylves and, uh, and said, you used to like this sort of roller coaster stuff. And then in the recommended Planet Coaster popped up and that was the first thing I'd heard about it. And everyone had already done loads of series by then already. So yeah, super late to the party, but I'm slowly catching up. So let's start with our topics. The first thing we've got here is park entrances. You know, we, we, we like the uh, the scenario editor, right? And we like being able to, to move the spawn points. Um, and we also like the uh, the park entrances, but they, they've got like these little annoying yellow things on them. And the spawn points have these big coverings on them. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I would love at some point, because, you know, uh, back in early alpha, we had the uh, the line entrances that had the big, ugly yellow archways mm -hmm. over them. Yeah, big yellow metal thing. Yeah. yeah, and we annoyed Frontier enough. They removed the big yellow archways. And I, I personally would love to see um, an option to remove the uh, the pillars from the park entrances and the um and the spawn points so that we could hide those easier not the spawn points the queue entrance oh the queue entrances mm. yeah spawn points is later and that's my topic so please stop uh, messing up my <laughs> topics thank you okay I, I thought this all goes together into one but... we can do it in one yeah let's do it in one so yeah i totally agree um i was so happy when they removed these ugly yellow gates which are I think still in the game like yep they're an option you, you can find i would them. love to have a checkbox maybe to remove or for the park entrance just give us two objects like one with the pillars and the gates and one without everything would be super nice and um the queue entrances i would love to remove the pillars because sometimes they not even close to fit what i'm trying to build yeah the queue entrance ones especially it's just it's another thing you have to cover up with scenery you know yeah I I get the. I think the problem is, and I've talked about this on on other people's videos I've been doing lately. Uh, Delady we and uh, Esper Ridley, we talked about this. I think the the big problem that Frontier has to deal with is that we, as very creative players, are a very small minority of the people who play Planet Coaster. So the stuff kind of has to look good enough for ninety nine percent of the people who play this game to put down and go, oh yeah, that's cool, you know. Mm. So. I think, but I definitely think there's there's no reason to have an option that's plain f for people who want, who wish to skin it, you know. So uh, yeah, I, I do agree that it should be a thing. But I, and again, the other thing is it's a slippery mm. slope because eventually you end up just wanting everything invisible. Just give me invisible everything that I can just cover up, you know. So there there has to be a some point where there there needs to be a physical object that goes down in the game, you know. Yeah, a pathway. But it's always it's always going to be too big for us who want to just make it all ourselves. There there would be a physical object because there'd be a staff member there, right? Yeah, but wouldn't it be nice not to have to have a staff member as well? If you're really being honest, yeah. that would be nice to be optional as well. I mean, yeah, no, I I wouldn't be against that at all. 
all, honestly. I, I would be totally okay with just having like a, you know, uh, when it's selected, like a tiny little arrow saying, yo, this is an entrance. Um, and then when you deselect it, it just goes away. Yeah, like a selection that you can click on, like an overview that just shows you where real stuff that guests can interact with is. But then when you click off that, it all it's all invisible and you can just skin everything, basically. In, in City Skylines, uh, with the Mass Transit update, they added in um, a mod, which was uh, arrows on roads, which points uh, in the direction of the road going. Like I uh, little arrows yeah. that just kind of float above would be fine. Something like that. Something like that. Or the entrance piece mm -hmm. now has like these founder stones, I think they call it. Yeah. Uh, something like ground texture that is easy to hide. Yeah, yeah. Just like a four by four square that goes on the floor. I would be fine with that too, mm -hmm. for example. And since you mentioned uh, the spawn points, these are wonderful that we have them and can use them. But I kind of want to have these massive covers removed because mm -hmm. I have some ideas that will not work with yeah. the massive cover. So please, Frontier, do that or I will never <laughs> play your game again. The other thing I'd say about spawn points, especially spawn points, not so much with park entrances and queue entrances, most people, are, you're going to want to hide the spawn point, really. Even people who aren't particularly creative. Like, that's not, you don't want to mm -hmm. see the people just pop into existence, you know? So even, even the least creative people are going to stick these into caves and stuff, you know? So there's no reason for it to have this sort of ornate uh, archway around it, I guess. I mean, like having something like a bus stop. Yeah. Mm. where uh, guests could just like spawn out of a bus or or a, or a hotel example, um, yeah. and having guests spawning out of a, a doorway or something. And I noticed that when you try and raise up the archway, it puts a big pillar underneath it that runs down to the ground. Now you can get rid of that, but you have to go into paths and then turn off path supports and then re-click the item with the new path. And it's a bit of a faff, but it's possible. And I just wanted to put that out as like a PSA that, you know, you can get rid of that uh, supports if you want to lift them up. Let's move on to the next one. Oh, billboards. Um, I love billboards at least sometimes but i really miss a lot of billboards uh, and i want more billboards especially smaller ones that aren't lit don't know if you noticed we have the small tvs which are super cute and i love that with well basically as non-lit version like for park maps or like posters on buildings and stuff like that which doesn't make sense if they are lit and i also want tv sized like billboards without the tv borders so c you can use them more easily for a lot of other stuff. What's your opinion about that? I mean, they, they do keep giving us other objects that have billboards built into them. That's why I'm kind of with you on this. It's like, well, you see, since, since they've launched billboards, we have what? Like, the most recent addition would be the... Uh, Spooky windows. No, the anniversary update. No, we had a canopy in the anniversary update. Yeah, yeah one of the canopies uh, is a TV and you can oh, yeah. like literally have movies playing on your canopies if you want. But it's really handy because like you can put a wood texture on it or something to just make it look a little... Little, like fit in a little bit more at least from a distance by the way another one that i want to have a non-lit version of yeah because for me it doesn't make sense to have a tv built in in a canopy yeah. there is yeah there's a little non-lit of the canopy oh okay sorry that's actually quite useful i want to have a play with that one because that's that's the smallest non-lit one mm -hmm. there is now because the the, t the tv the one the two and the four meter tvs mm -hmm. uh what i would give for a one meter and two meter with like you say no tv border and non-lit they're the most useful ones for like you say posters uh you know, wait times, yeah. just all sorts of things. I use billboards a lot in Pinewood Hills, like too much probably. It it looks okay until you turn the lights mm -hmm. off. You make it nighttime and posters glow. You know, it's just, it, it, yeah, I'd love the feet. I'd love a one meter, just plain billboard, no border, nothing. That'd be really useful. Something I just want to like add in here as well. Um, in the most recent update, we got a science fiction co pathway cover, which is full of glass. <laughs> yeah, it has like a little texture in it. So that there's like these weird hexes um, in the actual see-through texture with mild mm. reflections and everything. I want more glass in Planet Coaster. Can we just, like, stop beating around and just get some more glass in the video game, please? I have no idea why there's such an issue over this. Like, the company line is that it's the it's performance mm -hmm. issues now i could buy that if there wasn't five or six random pieces that have glass yeah. textures now like what's so special about those pieces i want to make a protest and just build that cover until the game crashes just make a huge box one of the top posts on reddit this week was forty-eight thousand of the new sci-fi canopies in an empty yeah. park um to kind of prove that it didn't damage sps uh, mm. fps now i know that's not how it works they're not rendering anything underneath the glass they're not you know it's the same object rendered 
48,000 mm. times. But even still, just give us a, a one meter, a two meter, a four meter plain glass bar- box, you know, a couple of curved pieces as well. Let us put them down until the performance stops. Yeah. Like we're already doing that with every other piece in the yeah. game. We're already doing that with um, special effects. We're already doing that with those weird little wood cornices that we use for everything other than a, actually a wood cornice. Mm. We understand that too much pieces are going to affect FPS. We get it. We can handle it. We're big boys. Just give us some glass, please. <laughs> yeah. Bringing it back to like, uh, the more casual audience of the game i don't think they will place enough glass to break the game like if it's if it is that performance intensive yeah. i don't think that you'll see your average casual player placing enough glass for that to be and i problem. understand not, not having glass windows that would require like a rewrite of the wall system like in the in the sims for instance you put a window on the wall it yeah. makes a hole in the wall basically mm. i get that we can't do that that's too built that's too ingrained and i don't mind that so much because 95 percent of windows in theme parks aren't real anyway so that i don't mind the fact that the windows in the game aren't glass just give me some glass pieces so i can do roofs domes totally. greenhouses uh, you know. bus stop yeah for example we want the, the the ability to add or remove segments of track from a coaster construction so at the moment it's one mm-hmm. fluid line and there's no way whilst within that building system we can say i'd like a little bit of track over here and to build off of it which i which would be very handy for things like like transfer tracks even though we don't have those in the game you know the the idea of them looking like transfer tracks would be very useful to be able to make them across but then also if you really want wants like a an intermin loop or something in a specific place it'd be nice to be able to put that loop in and then build the, a bit more of the coaster somewhere else and then be able to link up those two sections you've got a lake that you really want a nice helix around you've got a hill that you want the drop off but you know you, you could build those two bits and then do the stuff in the middle to, to fit i guess that would be handy if, but at the moment it's it's this one long piece of rope that you have to kind of cut sections in and out of. I, I think that, that that would be a massive fundamental change in the coaster design system so it's a huge ask but yeah that would be really interesting I see how that would work. You can kind of do it now. Like if you want, if you want to build like a transfer track, for instance, you can kind of do it now. You have to build the track. Oh yeah. And then click back a few places, get rid of that, and then carry on building. Yeah, you know. So, but the, so it's it's physically possible to have two unattached pieces of track within the same coaster, or just build a separate coaster which is what i do yeah i kind of do that as well usually separate coaster and just put them next to each other the only thing you get is that you get that odd notification don't you that say so and so coaster is not unfinished or whatever y- you can disable those from save to save though this topic by the way was brought up by cleave and i totally agree i can see it being hard to implement because it's basically kind of rewriting the whole coaster builder but um on the other hand it would be super handy and there are anyway a couple of things off from the coastal builder so maybe maybe for a next big mm-hmm. update it, it seems to me that one though to be honest and this is something that um i spoke with andrew chapel about at, at frontier expo things like that and things like um i know a lot of people have issues with paths as well mm-hmm. he he kind of has a term in his head that is uh that's going to be a planet coaster 2 thing you know what i mean like it's just it's that built yeah. into the core of the game that a rewrite would it might as well be Planet Coaster 2 and we'll start from the ground up sort of thing. And I, I've got a feeling Planet that... Planet Tooster? Mm. Yeah, Planet Tooster, good. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I did it. Yeah, I totally get that. I mean, they are all humans. I mean, they are devs, but also humans. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> and they humans make mistakes and don't think about a lot of things other people may think of. Yeah. So um, I totally get that. Maybe they should have implemented that feature from the beginning or at least thought of it. But there's only so much you can think of at the same time. So yeah. I, I totally get that. One of the things that they spoke about um, was the whole sort of building and scenery tabs and the separation mm-hmm. of those and why it's a bit random and convoluted now. And they said they originally had this huge idea that, that building pieces would uh, affect guests differently and scenery would be just for sticking stuff on the ground. You know, So a building would be walls and anything that attaches to walls. And then mm. scenery would be just the things that go on the floor the trees the bins the you know the, the set pieces and things like that and they they watched a really early mm. alpha video i want to say it was a silverette video but I, I don't know probably it's definitely possible probably was and he had done and he did something like took a, a, a street lamp and turned it on its side and pushed it into the wall to make a coat hook or something and it blew the mm. devs minds they just went i we, we none of us had considered that people would do this in the game none of us considered that this game was basically <laughs> going to be a box of lego for yeah. people 
and it and it totally the problem was there was so much of the the core system already ingrained that now we've ended up with this weird kind of scenery building separation that doesn't quite make sense and some stuff's in one that should be in the other and you know and the the fix for that is going to be planet coaster 2 i i really really like the recent update i think it's fantastic and they added one of my favorite roller coasters of all time at least design wise because i've never been on one which is the side friction um i really like wooden roller coasters um i've been on a couple and i absolutely adore the side friction because to me they're kind of a um, they're a technological marvel at least for the time because they're ancient they've been a, they, they've been making them for like close to 100 years now and uh they're literally just like a, a bloody wheelbarrow like let, let's be let's be real a side friction coaster is a wheelbarrow that rolls along a wooden track essentially it's like a a death trap by all accounts <laughs> and um we still have the weird high-tech braking system in the station for this type of coaster and i look at that and i scratch my head and go come on like this is you've taken a uh, a jumbo jet cockpit and put it on a cessna like what, what are you doing and i know that this is a huge ask but at some point <laughs> i would love to see a manual braking system um i realize it would be custom animations i realize it would be um changing the way the staff member operating the ride looks because there is no fri- side friction in existence that has a super advanced ride ops panel they have manual brakes which is literally a giant lever that Mm. the person operating the ride throws their weight against when the car comes in that stops the car i would Mm. love to see something like that they're fantastic yeah so that i don't need to you know put a giant block over top of the staff member and build a fake braking system for it one thing i hear people say a lot and it really annoys me is they say it can't be that hard to do x you know oh it is (laughs) just to clarify i know that this is a ridiculously stupid thing to ask for and i know it won't happen but i'm asking anyways because i can't you didn't let me finish i was gonna say that i really annoys me when people say it can't be that hard hard to do x but it can't be that hard <laughs> just to change the guy's animation because that's all it would be really is like you say to get rid of that pretty lights animation and to just stick a big there, there are it's not just side friction coasters there's some there's some old wooden coasters in the uk that still have uh, manual braking and it's uh yeah they have like a big red one and a big green one and it's you know the green one lets them out of the station the red one stops them as they come back in it's fantastic and yeah it would be a really great great thing to see and i noticed that 1.4 especially and in other up dates as well they're kind of really filling out their vintage sort of section you know with some of the recent yeah. flats we've got and coasters especially mm. they're really filling out this idea of vintage and like you say it's little things like that that they do so well in other areas the little touches really do make the game in other areas mm. little touches like having a, a little planko guy pulling the brakes and stuff and the other option is as well is to have a guy actually on the car i don't know if there's any in the states that you know of that do this but there's definitely some in the in the uk forget which but there's a pleasure beach where the brake is on the car not on the track and a guy rides the car and breaks it when he needs to oh really this is going to require some research <laughs> yeah this it's his job to to ride the roller coaster and break when he needs to it's it's at one of the pleasure beaches but i forget where is it i kind of want to have that job <laughs> we have a few theme parks in the uk called pleasure beach uh, they're always they're on the coast. The Black Blackpool Pleasure Beach yeah. being the famous one. That's probably yeah. the one you've heard of. Um, but there's a few that I think I think it might be it might be Yarmouth uh, Yarmouth Pleasure Beach. Let me have a look. It's Yarmouth Pleasure Beach, and it has a coaster that I'm pretty sure is just called Roller Coaster. <laughs> That's amazing. But there's like a, a, like two sets of four seats in front of him and two sets of four seats behind him and he sits in the middle with a set of levers and brakes when he needs to. Okay, Frontier, add that to the video game. <laughs> Moving on. I'm going to put a, a, a link in the lobby so you can have a look at a picture of it. There you go. Uh, he, and he looks so not happy with his job. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Just sat there <laughs> in the middle. He's just like that kind of build. Yeah, he does a little, yeah. I don't know how many are still going that do that, but that's still running today. You can go and ride that and the guy sits there and, and breaks it for I don't know what's better about this this image that you've shared here is the people up front that look super excited or the guy right behind the dude controlling the thing who looks kind of unimpressed <laughs> who's like paying more attention to the guy operating. To be fair, he he rode this coaster probably like 15 billion times already. Not the guy operating. There, there's two people right behind the dude operating. And they look just as bored as that guy. Like everybody else in the back is just watching the guy operate <laughs> the ride. So the next one is um, adding a bindable hotkey for smooth function on coasters. I would kill for that Frontier. Please don't make me do this. I'm pretty sure you heard of the 4 meter technique on uh, how to build a Cursor and we all love hate it. We love it because it's super smooth in the end, but we hate it to build that because it's 
fucking time consuming. Yes, Google, I said fuck this time. And I would love to have a bindable hotkey for that. I mean, I, I would actually take this one step further. Um, I would like a bindable hotkey to automatically build a piece of track so that I could hold down my mouse and just click and drag the shape that I want and then tap, say, control. Um, and then yeah, uh, maybe tap this. Uh, let's just say alt to automatically smooth the last eight meters of track moving forward. Um, mm. I I would love to see something like that. More hotkeys are always good. Like nobody nobody can moan about more hotkeys. Yeah, because if you don't want to use them, don't use them. You know. So yeah. it, can, it can't, can't be that hard. hard. <laughs> That's gonna be the name of the episode. It's a uh, journey to perfection. It can't be that hard. That's actually a good one. Yeah. Wait, no, that's gonna turn into a dick joke real fast. Oh yeah. Yeah. It already, in my head, it did about ten minutes ago. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we ever get mods, I don't know. It's a big if. <laughs> if we ever get mods, things like macros as well would be really good. And you could quite easily write. Um, I, I say quite easy. It can't be that hard to write a macro um that does that smoothing trick. So you finish the coaster. You press a button mm -hmm. and it go and it sends the little highlighted bit around back and forth, smooth back and forth, smooth back and forth, as, as much as you, I don't know. I've I've watched the videos on that te technique. I've never used it because ain't nobody got time for that. As far as I'm, I'm not that into my I'm not enough into my coasters for it to make a difference for me. You know, so I don't use it myself. But I can't imagine that would be that hard to to write a <laughs> macro that that does that for you. <laughs> Greg Burns, did you hear that? Do it, please. Thank you. I think we should move on to our last one because. I have the feeling that it's going to be a little bit longer. One of the big things I wanted to talk about was now we've had 1.4. What does 1.5 look like? Uh, are we getting a 1.5? Is 1.4 the end of free content for Planet Coaster? Like, but I think it would be quite neat, you know, to say you've had a year of free stuff now. So show us the dollar dollar. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say absolutely not, because that would be insane. They're going to make fundamental changes to the game. Um, and with that will come advances, patches, changes, updates. Assuming the game continues to sell and they continue to update it, I don't think we'll ever see an end of free content. Granted, I think that the size of patches are going to go down. Back during, in July, when we got that really big patch, which had like 150 new items or something, I don't think we'll see anything of that scale. I think it's going to be a much smaller scale things, you know, like here's like, you know, 10 items and a flat ride. Mm -hmm. I, I think we'll see stuff like that mm -hmm. in tandem with bigger expansion content. So will they be point hash ones then, or will they be... Because we had like 1.2, I think, that was spring, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, that was pretty big for con for for scenery content at least, especially. Yeah. And then and then one point three was summer, one point four this one. Whilst I think has probably been the biggest update, it was really quite weak for scenery. They gave us some weird scaffolding pieces and some silver coins or something, didn't they? It was it wasn't it was definitely wasn't a scenery update. This one. Do you think that like we'll keep seeing this kind of two or three flats, two or three coasters, a management change, and like fifty scenery pieces, depending on how many artists we can pull away from Jurassic World? Like, will that keep happening? indefinitely well number one jurassic world is a different team so that's irrelevant i was i was being purposely facetious there yeah. <laughs> i just wanted to clarify that sneaky <laughs> there are different teams within frontier you know there's the, there's the elite dangerous team the people working on jurassic world and then the people working on planet coaster obviously they share some people they probably toss people back and forth but yeah know, i don't think it matters what number they call it i think that big patches are going to continue saying one point whatever i think the next big update we have will be 1.5 you know a, a while ago i was saying they should do the season pass model Model anyway, which is, you know, here, spend $20, $15, or $30, whatever, at the beginning of the year, and then you just get everything for the rest of the year. I, I really wish they'd go that route, but it doesn't seem like they are. But what I personally think they're going to do is they're going to continue on kind of the trajectory that they are on, which is, here's a DLC, here's a small update with a lot of quality of life changes, and a bunch of cookies for the people who haven't bought the DLC. Because you have to keep those people who can't afford the DLC playing mm -hmm. so that they continue putting stuff on the workshop and making content for the game and being interested in the game and wanting to buy the DLC because they're getting more stuff. You have to throw that carrot to the people who haven't bought the DLC yet to tempt them into buying the DLC by continuing to play the game. I was quite surprised that with Spooky DLC, they put rides into it. Why is that? I thought they would have put the rides as a free update and just the stuff as the DLC. I, I think in the case of the Spooky update, those were very specific rides they were yeah but i think that if it was just stuff they wouldn't have had the arguments of get of sort of gating content necessarily because you could do pretty decent spooky looking stuff with what they had oh, yeah. you know using a combination of pirate and western and whatever um so I, I think it was just you know that was just giving you more uh, more of a tool set when it came to scenery I, I was quite surprised when they when they 
gated rides behind the spooky update. I, I was always expecting them to gate rides, um, and I still expect them to. Like, I, at some point in the future, I, you know, everybody's talked about it, and, you know, hopefully at some point they will do a, a water park ride, and, you know, they've, they haven't directly hinted at it, but they've been like, you know, this is a thing we're thinking about, so I would expect them to gate rides behind that. I personally am pushing for a carnival update. I would love to see a old-timey carnival update, which would, in my ideal world, be a bigger expansion pack that would include things like carnival games and maybe mo- like uh, more varieties on mouse coasters or old school wooden mouse coasters maybe a different merry-go-round like there there's definitely stuff that they could that they could lock behind uh, a dlc wall that i'm fine with at yeah. the end of the day i don't really care what they lock behind the dlc wall as long as they're still throwing carrots out to the people who aren't buying the dlc so that they keep playing the game my viewpoint with like paying for stuff is a little skewed i guess anything they release what, whatever i spend on it i'll make back off the video i make about it if you even spend money on it yeah well that well yeah there's that as well yeah like um, i fully understand to be honest with you they, they gave me a spooky dlc but i, ga- I gave it away because i was i was quite happy to buy it so i used it as a freebie i'm gonna say something right now the only time i buy games is for story mode my podcast yeah everything that i stream i've been given yeah us talking about spending money on things is definitely skewed <laughs> it is and he, like i say and even if even if you do spend the money that video alone from ad revenue will pay for whatever the cost of the, of the update is well, within reason like they bring a 300 quid update out <laughs> and to be fair the the prices frontier has for their dlc are very fair yeah i think so as well yeah it's a difficult thing because the idea of um worth is completely subjective yeah 100 percent. what you think something is worth is is completely in your head. I had this argument on Reddit a few times when Spooky was announced and how much Spooky was. Like people saying, oh, it's not worth it, it's not worth it. Well, I said, well, in, in the spooky pack, there is a, a globe light, like a really plain circular light. Mm, yeah, that's fantastic. I would have paid 50 quid just for that light bulb. <laughs> that would have been worth it to me because I was building those lights out of uh, regular lanterns covered up in art pieces and it didn't look very good. And I, I really wanted that sort of classic sort of, mm. it's used in so many different themes. It's really plain, yet it's quite still full of character. I would quite have easily put 20 quid down for that one bulb, right? So you you can't tell me that I'm wrong no, of course not. when you say that the spooky pack isn't worth it. I mean, the thing for me is if I spend one euro for a game, it should last one hour. So basically, if you take the price of Planet Coaster, which I paid in Alpha, so it was like 70 euros and all the DLCs I've got for free from Frontier into account, it's like, let's say 100 euros. I have more than two points 5k hours in the game since alpha 2 so yeah it was worth it definitely because the the game entertained me for so long that i can't complain about a couple of bucks yeah when we're talking about planet coaster and like dlc pricing i think there's only two other games that you can really compare it to on the market right now and that's uh, city skylines and the sims so the sims is ridiculously expensive it's EA. yeah <laughs> but the sims also has modern True. this is the thing that people don't talk about with the sims that frequently there's great custom support for custom content yeah. and it's cheap so they charge a lot for their dlc because people are just modding the game anyway so the people that do buy into those dlcs buying into the dlcs because they want to see more out of the game because they love the game city skylines also has mod support city skylines is a little is definitely cheaper but they're also a much smaller team they have less overhead etc yeah. and they're paradox and god bless paradox <laughs> Th- those are the two things we really have to compare planet coaster is cheaper than both of those so if we're just going to sit here and argue about value yes planet coaster is cheaper currently planet coaster doesn't have open mod support mm-hmm. and i think that's the key difference there especially with cities is their dlc uh, whilst it gives you like what were the, the equivalents of scenery in this game you know you get buildings you get nil buildings they also work in new mechanics mm-hmm. into the game that modders can then work with you know so that's what you're paying for you're paying for the new raw code yes consistently also around the time they put out updates they are adding in fixes to the game so i think in the future if they're smart when they put out a big pack they'll also be like we're also releasing this big free update to just kind of make people happier to the idea that oh you're about to spend another $15 on a game that you've put 200 hours into. And if you haven't put 200 hours into the game, maybe you shouldn't be buying the DLC anyway. It shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, I was about to say that because I haven't talked about my opinion, but I think yes, there will be a 1.5 update. I don't know if it's free or if it's DLC or whatever it is, but... There will be a portion to 1.5 that is free. But I think that fundamental stuff that changed the game in whatever amount of depth will be free and scenery is the thing to go 
to pay for. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah, we'll get those and they'll always be ten, twelve dollars. Yes. And that's fair. Yeah, because I mean artist needs to get paid. Yeah. Yeah. If every six months we get a DLC pack similar to Spooky, mm-hmm. okay, and it's ten euros. But they say from now on your point hash updates are gonna be paid as well. Okay, so we get one point five, we get one point six, and they are similar in size and amount of content as one point three and one point four. What would you pay for those? Mm. The size of the updates we get now, like a couple of rides, a new management feature feature i guess the other thing is as well is what what management feature do we not have now that we that we need i think just balancing a lot of but i think that's some discussion <laughs> for a next episode yeah john g <laughs> thanks for joining us and complaining about the game no problem sorry i could go on for hours i love planet coaster and because i love planet coaster i hate planet coaster you know that's just how it works oh absolutely <laughs> yep mm-hmm. that's the whole concept of the show <laughs> thanks for joining this time i'm pretty sure you will be Back. That'd be great. Thank you so much for having Unless me. Unless he's decided that he hates us. Who doesn't? <laughs> eh. For listeners and viewers out there, thanks for watching and listening. And if you have comments, suggestions, whatever it is, we have a wonderful comment section uh, under our videos. Fucking use them. And see you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.